6 o'clock and go through June 1st. Men's Fellowship Breakfast is Wednesday, May 3rd, 6.30 a.m. Be there, be square. Jesus and Girl Stuff presents Written in Red, Saturday, May 6th, 6 p.m. If you hadn't signed up, please sign up so we can get a head count. We're requesting a photo with Mom. If you have a mom or are a mom, please submit a photo of Mom with Children for a special Mother's Day project. Must be in by May the 7th. Email it to Pastor Jacob at cbcdeerpark.org. Senior Students High School Senior Sunday is May 21st. Uh, Central Students Camp Registration is live. It's July the 2nd through the 6th. See your bulletin if you want to sign up. Mark Lowry Hometown Weekend is October 13th and 14th. Once again, see your bulletin if you'd like to get tickets. There is a special discount for Central members. It is Central, all in caps. And pay attention to it too because there's some different different types of you can There's sign different up for packages time. you can get different you can, packages you can get a vip package you can get a three-day package and you get individual packages so look at it real hard also uh for vbs last year we did raffle baskets they're requesting raffle baskets again this year last year we did movie night so we brought a hundred things for movie nights tickets popcorn yada 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 so uh, we're going to do that again this year. Makes it easier. Makes That's it easy. Easy. Just yeah. keep doing yeah. the same thing. Just over keep and doing over the again. same thing over and over again. We don't forget it. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I did. <laughs> oh, by the way, that that uh, women's thing. Uh, written in red. Is it written in red? That's what the dinner is. Yeah. By the way, ladies, the written in red dinner. <coughs> the written in red dinner. <clears throat> we heard that part. It's the steak dinner. Cool. So you might want to sign up. Um, That's it. Okay, here comes the here comes the here comes the no fun part for me, okay? So this is this is what I would ask would like for y'all to do. If you have a prayer request, please write it down and hand it to Daphna. And then what I'll do every what I'll what I'm going to try to do is whenever we have a prayer request, I'll include it. I'll include it. I'll include it on a, um, the email when I send out the Sunday school lesson, and that way we can write them out. And I'll say this: if I start doing that each Sunday, it will be one, only the ones that we took up that we had the previous Sunday. I'm, I know this sounds bad, y'all, but I'm not gonna. I, if I start a list, it's gonna get to be about 25 pages. Right. So, so because I just I just gave you that information. So this is what I do. Do you have any immediate family need prayer requests? Family, family. Okay. On the fourth, we're gonna uh, insert that marker for the surgery, and the surgery will be on May 10th. I'm sorry. Say it again. On the fourth, they're going to put the marker in before they do. For the you. For me. Okay. Before they do the surgery, uh, I do surgery on May 10th at nine o'clock. So they're going to they're going to run a marker through and look at your. Yeah. No, yeah. they're just going to put it there so when the surgeon goes in to do the surgery, he knows exactly where to go. Oh, okay. And that's when again. Yeah. The Thursday for the marker. When next Wednesday, the next Wednesday for the surgery at nine. Yes, yeah, the tenth. The 10th. May the 10th? Mm -hmm. um, Aaron's bolt fell out of his walker this morning uh, when I was getting him out of the car. Yeah. So he lost his wheel. We got 
got this stuff back on and they're trying to find a bolt that fits his walk in the They who? Uh, the preacher and... <laughs> <laughs> who else? Uh, who else ever he gets? <laughs> Do we know where the walker is? Yeah. Okay. The preacher. <laughs> How long ago was that? Just before I walked in. Okay, he'll find somebody hopefully. Anybody else? John, yeah. Uh, May the 26th, they're going to go in and uh, do some uh, exploratory surgery on uh, Carly's brain. They, they found some. Shadow spots they sighted and they just run. May it again? Tell me again. May the 26th. May the 26th. Yes. Anybody write that down? No. I bet you love your life is. Uh -uh. Becky, May the 10th for surgery. I know about the marker. May the 10th for surgery. We'll get the wheel taken care of. May the 26th on the yes. Okay, so what I'll, what I'll do, what I'll do, and with Brad's help, between the two of us, uh, I'll put those. And if something else comes up during the week that I know, then I'll, I'll put it on there. This is what I, I really would suggest to everybody. And I'm not trying to pass, I'm, I'm passing the buck. Um, man, we got two, two prayer groups that meet every Sunday, almost every Sunday, I'd say about 8% of the time, 90 maybe. There's a ladies' prayer group and a men's prayer group. If you have something that you need to be prayed, needs to be prayed for, Man, you can hand it to you can hand that request to me. You can hand it to Brad. You can hand it to Steve Hines. You can hand it to Melissa. Any, uh, any any one of us group, and we'll get it to the right. We'll, more than likely, typically, if we all hear about it, we're probably going to send it to the men and women's prayer group to be prayed about. So. Um, <sighs> Danny, pray for us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that we have, that you've given us, Father. We thank you for this time we have to come worship and praise you, Father. We ask you that you be with the, the teachers and the preacher, Father. We ask that you be with the uh, musicians and the singers, Father. We ask that you uh, unite us together in one purpose today. We ask you, Lord, that if there be anybody here that needs anything, from you that you would consider consider that Father a request from us. We ask that you uh, be with each and every person here today, Lord. And if there be anybody that needs you as a personal Savior, Lord, that you move the Holy Spirit into their heart, and move the words that the pastor has and the teachers put out today that get them thinking in the right direction, Lord. We ask all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The temptation to test God. I, I I looked at the lesson. There's sometimes I wish I don't. I wish I didn't look at the lesson because I I don't think I'm confused, but I'm going to pretend like I'm confused. But he know he knows that I'm not confused. Where are we going? Um. Anyway. You gonna put it up there? Uh, right on you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, Deuteronomy six, sixteen through nineteen. to make sure that we always pray Amen. for Mark yes. Francis. Yes. Yes. When I start sending that, I, I will probably have that one on there every time. Yeah. Every That's time. The list. Well, I mean, any, anyway, so let's look at the lesson. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just let y'all take off when I read this. I'm, I'm not, I'm not re real sure which direction I want to go anyway. 
You shall not tempt the Lord your God as as ye be as ye tempted him in Manasseh, in Manasseh, Massa, Massa. He shall diligently he, he ye shall diligently diligently keep the commandments of the Lord our, your God on his on his testimonies, his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do and thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. That it may well be with thee that thou mayest go into the into into and possess the good land which God is where, O oh, God, share swear unto thy fathers to cast out all thine enemies from before thee as the Lord has spoken. <clears throat> That's why I don't like to read. Um, <clears throat> so some, something hit me this morning when I was thinking about the lesson today. When I was thinking about the the lesson I'm going to be doing tonight. <clears throat> three three words keep coming up in my mind, and this time I, I didn't I didn't go looking for the third one that's come up. <clears throat> Unless somebody's fact checked me, and I haven't fact checked myself lately on this one. The only place that I've seemed to be able to find the devil described as the accuser is in Revelation. Now that may, if that's, if there's more than one, y'all find it, help me find it or whatever. It's not hard to find the word that he's called the tempter. That's easy. That's pretty much all in the Bible. <clears throat> the one that hit me today is because the way these lessons keep continually going. <clears throat> the one that hit me today is the tempter. And I didn't go looking to see how many times that he may be called the tempter. I'm sorry, I said tempter. The deceiver. So, I guess this is like the, <clears throat> I guess this is like my teachers when I was in high school. College, not so much. They don't, I don't think, I don't think they really care if you learn anything or not. Um, but my, my high school, my teachers growing up from elementary to high school, they were very, they were repetitive. They would pound something in their head, in their head. Back in those days, they said, it wasn't good to memorize. You need to learn. I beg to differ. It's the same thing. When you memorize something, you pretty much got it for the rest of your life, which means you probably learned it. Somewhere along the line, at some age, we lose some of it. <laughs> Maybe a lot of it. <clears throat> So we've, I've asked the same question over and over again, and I'll answer real quick. God does not tempt us. That's not in his nature. That's not him. I'm going to get a little bit of argument out of this one, but the devil's called the tempter for a reason. Okay? We sin, we sin by our choice. It's our choice to sin. God doesn't make us sin. The devil entices us into sin, but we choose to sin. I've, all, I've always had this thought in my mind. And I can't think of a good one right now, but there's, to me in my mind, and, and we, can, we can discuss this one as soon as I say it, to me in my mind there's a difference between lying and deceiving. They both are the same to me. There, there is a difference. You can just flat out lie to somebody. Or, or you can be something that you're not. Or say that you're something that you're not. That's called deceit. So when I studied it this, the, the lesson this time, the first thing that caught my mind was this. Just like in the garden with, with, with Eve, the devil didn't say, didn't tell them to go eat that fruit. He started asking them questions. Are you sure he said that? Are you sure that that's what he told you to do or not to do? Are you sure about that? Did he really tell you not to do that? And if he did, then why did he tell you that? That's, that's, he's, he's not lying to anybody. He's just questioning God's word. Raising doubt. Raising doubt, I, and I know none of us in here have ever questioned God's word. God's word, have we? What does it What does it mean to tempt God? Hmm. When he says, "Do not tempt God," what are we talking about? Well, if you'll do this for me, then I'll do this for you. 
Okay. Well, that's a quick way. That's no, that's a quick way to say it right there. I'll, I'll <laughs> fix it. You'll do what you said you're going to do. I got it highlighted too. Well, I've got I've got my notes that I wrote. I don't care too much about theirs. I just use <laughs> theirs who the book of these guys? <laughs> no, the book. The book. <laughs> the, uh, the word uh, is tenasu, and that word has a primary word, and the primary word is nasal. And that word means to test or try. And that word, uh, that's basically uh, Strong's definition. There's uh, another one where they list all the different ones, and they put in from one, uh, let's see, it's called the uh, Brown, Driver, and Briggs, and they said temptation can be used in that, but it is not the word temptation as we use it today. So, uh, the, the, what, the, what the lesson says, and this one was pretty good, testing the Lord, or tempting, refers to the practice of placing demands on Him that are inconsistent with His character or nature, or that are inappropriate for the circumstances. So it's it's not a tit for tat per se. You do this, I'll I'll do this if you do this. That that's not. It could be if you're asking for something that is outside of his character. But it's asking for something or putting a demand on him to the point where it's kind of like boxing him in. If you'll do this for me, yada yada, yada and and asking him to do something that's outside of his character. So, so could you use the term if you ask him to do something outside of his will for what he has for you? So, how many? I mean, this this is where I, this this is where I tend to get in trouble. So, this is my thought process. Um, man, I don't even know if I want to say that. Is there? There's there's nothing wrong, and this is the quick and easy way to say it. There's nothing wrong with asking and, be, and, pr and praying for something. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I've been running with Brad for, what, about five years maybe? That long? Mm -hmm. So, and a, and a lot of guys in here, and men for a long time, it's like, and I think the preacher preached on it. I've gotten to where and it's, it's not a habit. It's just a fact of life for me right now. You know, I could say, hey, God, if you would cure this cancer complete, completely out of my body, please. Instead of saying, please, I need, I need to end it this way. God will completely cure this cancer out of my body if it's your will. So because I, in, in a sense, if I say, please do this right now, I, 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 whatever, I'm asking him to do something that might, that, might not be, that might not be his plan for me. And so how do we, how do we know that? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. If I have the answer to that right now anymore. All I know is, is each time it seems like each one of these lessons, each time I get into this study, in, whether it be in, in, in Deuteronomy, whether it be in Hebrews, whether it be in James, or whether it be in these lessons that we're looking at right now, the question keeps popping up. And everything to me, and I, lo I looked up the definition of deceit. The the devil, everything he does to us is deceit. Mm -hmm. And and you can see that he's in fear to us. Well, before we do, yeah, go ahead. one of the things I mentioned in 17, how do, how do we stay in his good graces? What's he tell them? Keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes. If you do that, you're staying within his will. And things that you need, not necessarily things you ask for, but things that you need, he'll provide for it. That's as long as you stay within his will. You, you know, we might, we might, there's another, in the next group, there's another one. But like that verse right there, we might, we might want to start highlighting those kind of verses right there. Because the bottom line, it's it's over and over and over and over again. It's going to stay this way. What's it say to do? Stay in His commandments. Stay in His statutes. Be diligent about it. What what does that mean? Get in the Word and stay there. And I'll, there's it may have been in the lesson or comedy read. It doesn't just mean going there and read the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
It means go in there and study the Bible. Understand. Un understand. The Bible. I mean, you can look at these verses out of Deuteronomy. It tells us, it gives us the complete guidelines of how we should live our life. Are, are we teaching these things to our kids? Are we teaching them to our grandkids? And when I say, or when I, I was talking about something earlier today, when I say teach them, I don't mean telling them. I mean, is my life reflecting to my kids <coughs> and to my grandkids? And sooner or later, if I live long enough to my great grandchild this morning, do I, am I leading the living the lifestyle that says, this is how you should go? <coughs> am I going to mess up? We're going to mess up till we're out of here. But we should be, we should, because it uses the word diligent. Yeah. You shall diligently keep my commandments and my statutes. And the only way we can do that is get in that word. He, it's a two-way deal. When he, made the, when he made the promises, when he made the promises to Abraham, he is saying, you do these things. All right, that's our part. His part is, he will always remain true to his promises. Right. He's consistent. He will not change. He can't be tempted, changed, or nothing else. He's consistent in what he asks for, what he wants, and what he'll do. Our part is to do what he's asking us to do. Now, sounds easy. I'm going to pick it back, pick it back up on one thing you just said. This, it's, it's not a two-way. It's, it's only one way. And it's his way. It's period. his way. It's his way. Period. Yeah. So, but we have the freedom to choose that, choose his way, or choose our way. And our way is not going to be good. I, I took what I said and what he just said, and really it boils down to a thought like, you know, he's he's the parent over Israel. He's a, like we're a parent over our children. He knows what's best. We know what's best for our children. We teach them. He's not a tyrant. He's, he knows the future. He can see. He knows what's going to happen. He tells them, do this, because he knows what's best for them. We know what's best for our children because we've been there. We understand what's going to happen in life, more or less. And we tell them what they need to do to succeed, to keep themselves out of trouble. He knows that for Israel. He's telling them these things. They will... You know, he's saying, you do this, you'll be blessed. Because he knows, like we tell our children, they're, they're testing him by their son. They keep saying, he's been providing for them. We provide for their children. They say, well, I don't know. Do this for me, and I'll believe you. Like our kids say, but if you love me, you'll do this. That, that's a test. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, and that's, what, that's, what, <laughs> that's the way they're testing, and they're saying, you know, He's been providing a manna. He's been leading them. He's been making their clothes. He's been doing all these things for them, and they still don't believe. It's like, okay, we'll do this for us. They're testing, and that's and our kids do it. We see it. We that's how we can relate and understand. Is because we're going through the same type of thing. That, that you can. The, the, the thing that the thing that jumps in my mind when Daniel was saying that is in Malachi, and and. and Everything that God tells us is promises. In Malachi, it, the one that just jumped, it just jumped in my head. In Malachi, it says, "It says, bring your, bring all all your tithes into the storeroom, okay." And He says, "And then and then see if I won't open up the window and dump blessings on you that you can't even handle." Mm -hmm. That's not a test. That's not a trial. That's that's simply telling Him, "This is what I will do." And but the thing about it is, is the, the other thing about it is. We have the choice to do it or not do it. But the thing is like, hey, I'll do this, God, if you'll do this. That's tempting. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's going to do for us already. We need to follow his plan. Put, put the money up there. Uh, let's read those, please. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgment which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondsmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us about of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon, Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon we all household before our eyes. And he brought us out from them, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And then the Lord commanded to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it as is at this day. And it shall be 
our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So what's he, what's he telling them here? Pass it on. Pass it on. Pass it on. Because the next generation, okay. this generation has witnessed, has seen the things that the, where the Lord had provided for them. They, they, were, they partook of it. The next generation doesn't necessarily have that. So they're relying on this generation to tell them. And that generation is supposed to tell the next generation. And so on and so on and so on. Back, back in the day, they, they didn't record things as much, so things were passed on verbally. So people expected that. They expected when you asked a question, when a, when a child asks a question of why do we do these things, go th what he's telling them is give them the examples. We were in Egypt. We were in bondage. The Lord did mighty things and got us out of bondage. You got to, the list went on and on and on. But they've got to, the next generations have got to understand why we are to obey the commandments. Why, why are we to obey the statutes and the commandments? Don't just say obey them. Tell them why they should obey them. If you will, what's in it for them if they obey them? I was, I was, I had something in my head, and I and I missed it. I guess because I read. But when, if we kick, go back to the, the other verses and being on, please. So. You should not tempt the Lord your God as you, as you tempted him in Massa. Anybody familiar with who that verse is? That's when the Israelites were arguing with Moses about what. <laughs> Yeah. What? Water. Yeah. Did, did, for whatever reason, that thing caught my attention this morning, and I thought, hmm. Do you know there's two occasions about that water business? There's more than one. There's two occasions about that water in the wilderness. So the first time God tell in in in, in Exodus 17, I believe. I wrote it down. I didn't bring it with me. I'm getting good about that mm. or bad about that. But uh, in Exodus 17, he says, he tells Moses, go out there and speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. And it'll bring forth water. And he does. The second time he does it, there's a, there's a discussion about that. It's in Numbers 20. And he says, go out there and speak to the rock. What did Moses do? He struck it. He struck the rock. I don't. I, at that point in time, he did not do God's will. He did Moses' will. And so what did that cost him? It cost him a trip into the promised land. He got to see it, that's it. And you're thinking, man alive, that's harsh. That's harsh, but that's one of those things that I talk to you, that I mention every now and then. He was, Moses was his man at the time. He was what? He was his man. Responsibility. What'd you say? With much authority comes much responsibility. Yeah. Got, got he, told, he the children of Israel were steady messing up. That's why they spent all the time in the wilderness. Moses wasn't supposed to mess up. That was God's guy. Yeah. He 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 can mess up because he's human. Right. Job could have messed up because he was human. Christ is when we get to reading these next verses a minute. Christ with the form of a human, one hundred percent. Human. He can't mess up. He isn't gonna mess up. That's the whole deal. Those guys could mess up. The the real the real lesson, the flip side of the lesson is this, and you said it. With those position, with that position Moses had, lots of responsibility comes with that position. And you say, Well, the preacher says, Don't put him up on a pedestal. Don't put your preacher up on a pedestal. Just be sure of this one thing. If he doesn't do the things he's supposed to, he's gonna he's gonna pay for it dearly. Because it's not just him. That's why we have to pray for him. Yeah, it's it's. The, Danny said that's why you ought to be praying for your preacher all the time because it's not just him messing up. That means if he does something he shouldn't do, wrongly do it, then he's messing up a lot of other people that he's responsible for. And you think that ain't right? Well, that's just. 
That's just the way it is. He knows. He knows. He knows it. Your preacher knows it. I guarantee he does. And that that does cause some kind of stress in his, in, in that little bitty body. <laughs> don't, you, don't you think? Don't you think for one minute that his job is just on Sunday? Oh, boy. Oh, maybe, maybe if we go back to the first part, we I'll be okay. It might be all right. Thank you. Oh, man. Beck, you got that? I do. Go on, treat it. Then the devil taken him up into the holy city and set of him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, Now that be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Is any of thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, and it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So I, I, I was I was looking at so I have a, a deal that I teach tonight, so I was looking at that this morning for tonight. Is the devil quoting scripture to him? Yes. Kind of, sort of. Almost. It's scripture. Huh? It's scripture. No, he, he, he's he, quoting Psalms. He, he quoted Psalms. Psalms. Yes. Psalms, Psalms 90, what was it, 91? 91, 91, 91 11, 11, 12. 11 through 12. 11 through 12. He's kind of twisting it a little bit. He just, he just left out four oh. important words. Well, wait a minute. He's what? He just kind of twists them. There, there's that, that, there, that's what got me on that trail this morning. There's that deceiver talking to him. Yeah. He just kind of... told us Wednesday night, Satan was our first false prophet. And um, he, we have to be aware of false prophets because they're going to make things look good and they are going to twist things. Um, we, we don't do that, do we, Kim? No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, it's just us guys, us, us folk, guys, ladies, whatever. How many, how many times have, uh, how many times have you read at least through the first two chapters of Genesis? More than once. Come on, raise Don't be bashful. Okay. So Danny, Danny joins our Bible study group. Danny makes us go back to Genesis. I don't even know how many times this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we had what maybe maybe a month or more of Bible studies just to get through the first three or four verses, but when you get to the part in Genesis where it gets down, I guess chapter six, I don't remember now. When we when when you start talking about in the in the uh, in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned, if you'll re if you'll read over that account real slow like we did, you'll find out that that the devil. Ask Eve a question. One of these kind of questions, just like he's asking Jesus right now. Did he really say this? And then Eve quotes back what she's been told, but she leaves a little piece of just a one or two words out. And Adam doesn't say a thing. Because he's standing right there with her. And then Adam does what he does. We saw something I think last Sunday was Adam blamed it. He blamed it on the woman. And at, before he could finish the sentence, he said, it's the woman that made me, that you gave me, that made me do that. I mean, the, the devil, the devil's all about setting a trap out there, putting the bait in, and then questioning or quoting the, the word of God. What I'm seeing now, like in this lesson, quoting the word of God, he just manages to leave a few words out every now and then. And then he cha what he does is he challenges self. And the thing he does know about us, because he can't read our mind, but he's seen as an action. And he knows, he knows self is weak. So then he sets the temptation out there. 
and it, it's up to us to wrap it or not. It's just, it's just funny to me. When I read this, it just, I snickered. Because <laughs> he snickered. said, he's quoting verse. Who wrote it? <laughs> Who no. wrote the verse? He knows it. The Lord wrote the verse, right? Yeah. Scripture is written by man, inspired by God. So it's God's words. So he's, he's twisting what he wrote and thinking he's going to fool it. You know, the, 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 lesson, the lesson said something interesting about that. There's, there, you can have three or four thought processes in your mind because God, the devil only knows what he sees and hears. You so he, know your mind. He, he, know, he's, he knows that Jesus is the Messiah. He knows that if he can, if he can throw the bait out there, and if, if Jesus takes it, he's trying two things. The reason he went after him after the 40 days or during the 40 days the human body is at its weakest point. He's hungry, he's thirsty, he's tired, he's been beat up, okay? So that's one thing. The, the second thing about it is, is, is can, I, can I trick him? Like he, th he thinks he can trick him because he doesn't know any better. So he's not questioning, hey, are you the Messiah? He's just saying, as the Messiah, and the, the one that I was looking for. What kind of Messiah goes, are you? What kind of Messiah are you? If, if we know we know the answer, maybe other people didn't know the answer. We got it right here in front of us. Okay, the bottom line is if he can somehow or another trick Jesus into doing something, it breaks at the chain on everything. He he then he he did if Jesus if Jesus would have done if he'd have turned the stones to rock. The devil says, "Do this right here. Jump off of this pinnacle." And I think this, when I looked at it, they're, sitting, they're, foot they're, foot they're, on, they're on the porches. Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch. And, and the, looking down at that valley, they said it's roughly 425, 450 foot. So he's looking down there and he says, you know, if you, if you jump off of this, the angels will come and catch you. They're not going to let you hurt yourself. And, and he knows this. So go ahead. You know, you know you're, you, go ahead, jump off, show me who you are. And jump off because you know good and well the angels are going to catch you. If Jesus would have done that, we know that he didn't. We know that he's not. But had he done it, it breaks the whole chain of everything. There is no resurrection. There is no there is no death on the cross because he won't he won't be what he was sent to be. His his answer is, and again, I think we talked about it last Sunday. The only reason that that this is going on. Hey, I'm going to just, I'm going to quit trying to mix around the words. The only reason the devil's trying to tempt him, the reason it's going on, is so he can show me, Alan, when he comes at you this way, do this. But before anything happens, the only way you can know he's coming after you is you better be in this. And, and I mean, I, do we, have we ever had a lesson in here for whatever, 26 years now? Have we, especially been in camp for sure, for about 26 years now. <laughs> Have we ever had a lesson that, that it, we don't get reminded who our Savior is and what we need to do to prevent it? It's this book. Think about it for a minute. If somebody was just come up and quote that psalm verse to you, would you have noticed those four words missing? I probably wouldn't know the verse. Well, I'm just, just making a point. The only way to know that those four words were missing is to be in it and know it. And that's, that's an extreme example. You know, picking four words out of two verses, that's extreme. But the, the point is, the only way we're going to know we're being tempted is to, is to go back to this and see, does it apply here? If it doesn't apply here, then it's not so. How many, how many people, I, I would, this, I, I'm sorry, this one come in my head this morning too, because I was looking at two different things. How many times have y'all said or heard y'all heard it preacher? Even, there's even songs. He could have called 10,000 angels. Yeah. Could he really do that? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. If something was wrong, did he even need to call? No. Because they're, they're there. Already, they've they're, already got they're, their charge. They're, they're there. Yeah. They're, they know what their... The angels know exactly what their duties are. It's not ministries neither. That's, well, it would be. They're ministry what, experience. That's right. Yeah, they, what they're what their spirit. Do y'all believe that? Y'all really believe there's angels? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
The that fact, was pretty good. The fact that I'm still sitting here and says there's angels. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, there have been many times over I should not have been sitting here and it had not been for them. You know, we believe in angels, but we also, it tells us in Corinthians that, Corinthians that Satan comes like an angel of light to lead us astray. So we have to be careful of the way Satan builds himself to us. So, so the word I use for that is deceiver. Yes. There's no tempting there. He's trying to deceive us. And that, that's, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out in my mind now what's worse, to lie or to deceive. Because a yeah. lie is just kind of straight up. It deceive is like trickery. It's like a sin. It's, a sin is a sin. It's, it's a, a sin, sin is a sin. sin. Yeah. So Lucifer trying to deceive Christ does it make sense except for the one thing you got to remember he thought he was greater than God he thought he was yeah so so in his mind he should be able to try and deceive Christ he is the master deceiver he deceived himself mm -hmm. he thought and, and one of the things that crossed my mind and I don't know if this is true this is just um, a thought by Adam well, there's verses that say this, too. That's, that's, there's, some, there's some point in time, I guess there's a grace period, I don't know, uh, that the, I don't... There's a greater chance that you're going to be protected by angels. I'm going to go this way. If you belong to God. Well, we're all God's children. Now, if you're saved, then he, the, the angels... <laughs> As they have the same responsibility over, over protecting Christ, they have the same responsibility to save, to protect the saved that what, he's gathered up. What did that verse in Psalms say? If you are in his will and you stay in his will, the angels will protect you. They have, angels are created by God to do certain tasks. I'm protection of us is one of them. I'm going to tread lightly on what I'm saying because it's for, it's for tonight. The big thing is being in God's will. How many times, Becky, did Danny draw that circle up on the board? Oh, yeah. I think every Sunday. Almost every Sunday. <laughs> I think every Sunday. He, he did it every Sunday because yeah. me me, and Dewey and Larry, were, we were all in his class, so he knew one of us probably wouldn't be walking right. <laughs> me mostly. But he, he did that, and I'm, it, there's a huge difference. Are we ever out of his protection not if we're saved. Well, that verse Are we ever out of his will? We can't be. That verse is in uh, Psalm 91, 11, and it says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In all thy ways, all ways was the four words that the devil left. Yeah. Well, I don't know all the ways, Becky. How can I find out? Get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. It, so you, you're the guy now, huh? Brad said he's ready to close us. No, I didn't. <laughs> I just showed you my watch. Well, that means you're ready. I'm not ready either. Go ahead. <laughs> We're going to pray now. We're going to pray now. Okay. Father, thank you for today. Thank you. Thank you for this class. It's, uh, it's, it's good to be able to come in and learn your word try to and, and try to understand it, come better at it but be able to do it in such a manner that, that it's enjoyable. Father, I hope that, uh, I pray that the words that were, that were spoken here today and the examples given hit home with some, some people or all people. They go out of here and, and put those in practice. Be with the preacher today as he delivers his word. If there's anybody in the, <clears throat> in the church today that is not saved, let his words prick their heart and, and let them start asking questions. To get to know you better. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Cowboy. May the 26th on, on uh, Carly. For the, for I wrote it down for you. Well, not the brain thing, though. Yeah, yeah I did. May 26th. Carly. For what? For the brain surgery. Okay.